Hello, Laverne here, and thank you for joining me. In this video, I'm going to discuss uh, prayer studies. And the reason is, is because over the past couple of years, I've had a number of debates on this issue, and it reared its ugly head again not too long ago, where people, atheists in particular, bring up the fact that there have been prayer studies done that have shown prayer is ineffective. In fact, some even go so far to say that the people being prayed for fared less well than those who were not being prayed for. And atheists love to point at this and say that this is evidence that not only does prayer not work, but it should count as evidence that God does not exist. So I'm going to address this issue, this issue of prayer studies. The first point I want to make is that even somebody who has been a Christian for five minutes should know that we are not to test God and that a prayer study like the ones that are presented today, the ones that have been done, they, that these prayer studies go against Scripture, that they are a test of God, and therefore it should be no surprise then as to the results of these prayer studies. We are not to test God, and when we do test God, it's not positive things are going to happen, but rather negative. Now, addressing the particulars of the prayer study groups, or the prayer studies. We need to know things that are not explained in these prayer studies, at least not the ones that I've looked at. Things such as, what was the faith of the person being prayed for and that of the person doing the praying? Say, for example, you had somebody who's a Protestant, uh, who is the one that's sick, and they, they find out that the person doing the praying is Catholic, and they doubt the validity of the Catholic being a Christian. Their faith in those prayers is going to be very, very small. And what about the Catholic? Is the Catholic praying directly to God, or is he praying to the saints, asking that the saints intercede? So these are things that these prayer study groups need to make clear. And what if it's a Protestant that's doing the praying? What kind of Protestant? I'm, is the person praying strictly in their own tongue, or are they praying in the Spirit? Because when somebody prays in the Spirit, they do not even know what they are praying for. So it can't even be said that they were praying for the person's physical healing. If half of the time a person is praying, it is spent praying in the Spirit, there's no way of knowing of what is actually being prayed for and whether or not that prayer was answered. Say, for example, somebody is praying in the Spirit, it could very well be that the Holy Spirit is not praying for healing of this person, but rather for their salvation. It could be that this person needs to repent of some sin, and, and that's what the Holy Spirit was praying for, to have their eyes open to, to something that we are totally unaware of. So there are so many things to consider when we look at these prayer study groups. We also need to consider the the faith of the person being prayed for, such as, how strong was it? Because when we look at Jesus in Scripture, we find out that in his own hometown, he was unable to perform any miraculous healings. He could only perform very minor ones. And the reason is because of the people in the town, that they knew him, that they were so familiar with him, they just did not accept the fact that he could do these miraculous healings. They did not accept the fact that he was a great prophet, or the Son of God. So we need to look at the person's faith. What was, it, what was it like? And what was the faith like of the people doing the praying? And what was their heart condition? Did they come before God with a humble and contrite heart? Or did they come before God with unforgiveness in their heart? Did they have pride? Were they full of pride? Were they perhaps maybe just come from an affair that they were having and come directly to the hospital to do the praying. What kind of prayers then were being sent up to God? I assure you, if they do not have a humble, contrite heart, if there is unforgiveness in their heart, if they have an ought for somebody or if they have unrepented sin, then the prayers being sent up to God would have been prayers with a foul odor rather than a sweet fragrance. So these are the things we need to know. But do we know them? Absolutely not. Now, for those who 
are unfamiliar with praying in the Spirit, I would like to give an example of that so you can understand what I'm talking about. There is a three-year-old boy I know. His name is Malik. I've made a couple of videos already about him, and I've asked people to pray for him. The reason is, he's three years old, and he has a brain tumor. It's uh, incurable. The traditional uh, therapy is not going to help him. And he was given approximately nine months to live a few weeks back. So I'm going to pray for him, first in my known tongue, that of English, and then in the spirit. So I would begin by praying, and just asking the Lord to hear me. Father, I just ask that you hear my prayers. I ask that you seek my heart. I come before you with a humble and contrite heart, and I ask, Father, that you hear these prayers. Hear my words, Father. As I pray for this little boy, I ask that you help this little boy, that you heal this boy. You are the great surgeon, Jesus. I. You are the great healer. I ask that you place your hands on this boy's head, that you bless him. I ask that you do this for your glory and for the kingdom of God. I ask that the Lord God glorify himself by healing this little boy, to bring a miraculous and supernatural healing to his little body that he and his family, his loved ones, his parents, all will become greater witnesses for you. That this little boy will become a living testimony to your greatness, to your wonder, and to your glory, Father. We ask these things. We ask that you reach down and bless this little boy with a miraculous healing. You gave him life, Father, once. Now we ask that you give it to him a second time by way of this miraculous healing. We ask these things in the name of his most precious name, Lord of Lords, Jesus. We ask in your most precious name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So you see, when praying in the Spirit, we have no idea what we are praying for. We just trust in the Holy Spirit that He will intercede on our behalf and pray for that which most needs praying for. But is it for a healing? We don't know. Is the prayer answered? We don't know. But I can tell you this, when we test the Lord and when we come before Him with a heart that is hardened and we have unforgiveness, our prayers will not be answered. And so for those people who are atheists, perhaps you were a Christian at one time and you found that you prayed to God and He didn't answer. I ask you, at that time that you were praying, when you claimed to be a Christian, you were praying to God for something. What was your heart condition like? If at that time you were taken away, at that time that you were beginning to pray, you were taken and you were put on trial for being a Christian, would you have been found guilty or not guilty? Because if you would have been found not guilty of being a Christian at the time you were doing your praying, can it be any wonder then that your prayers weren't answered? And if your prayers weren't answered, is it possible that it is because you were going through a time of testing, that you were going through the refining fires, and that in rejecting God because your prayers were not answered as you had hoped, you then turned your back on God? Did you fail the test? These are things that Christians who have walked away from God need to ask themselves. All right, uh, that's about it. I look forward to comments. And if you are a Christian brother or sister and you know of something that I missed here, and I'm sure there are things that I did miss, I'd appreciate you commenting on the video, explaining other reasons why it is that prayers may not have been answered and why these tests are not proof of God not answering prayers. They are not proof that God does not exist. 
Until next time, peace and blessings.